So when I don't use research, I use variance, and I draw variance at least twice during the game. So these six have to do with the beginning of the game up to 42. These are for the Japanese. They're mixed up, and I'm just going to grab one, and I get number two. I'm going to drop one out of my hand. Okay, number three for the Americans. So the Americans get to draw an extra magic counter. Nice. I already drew these. And you can do it at the start of any one of your turns when you draw. And I'm going to leave the Japanese guessing and just say I'm drawing three. And I'm not going to reveal that yet. Let's see how that works. Okay. So I only have one magic counter. So at the start of the game turn. So on the first turn we announce all patrols and base changes. And this patrol doesn't have to follow, the one that is going to Pearl doesn't have to follow the 20 hex roll limit. And we put it out here at Pearl Harbor, three hexes away to strike. The second one, now we have no base changes, those are done first. Okay, so this patrol, I announced that it is moving from there, right here in the Java Sea, because I want it three hexes away to reach all these capitals in case I have to put ground support there. Now he can tell me to uh, tell him the exact hexes I'm going to take or if he doesn't want to stop it I'm going to go there. Now he can decide to stop this anytime along that route or even wait till I get to the hex to stop it. But as an allied player this is one of the times where I was talking about the patrols. The Japanese want to do patrol here because they have a lot of invasions going on and they want this patrol to help out. So basically this is a new base. You don't have to roll for interceptions way up here anymore. This is the new base. And so from here I'm going to help intercept anything the Allies do. But like I said, once he got to the hex, he announces his airstrikes and he, he uh, puts his planes accordingly, and then I can say I want to intercept them in that hex, and there's a sequence you follow. But I'm going to say I'm not intercepting, and he's going to say he has no airstrikes. Remember, the only air that can hurt him is this one, and it's inverted. And he's going to invade that hex anyway, so we have no airstrikes. And I will move my Japanese troops, and all we're doing here is just kind of going into Burma, and uh, I'm going to take Ragoon here. So... Let me do that. So there's my movement. Like I said, I'm just I'm going to occupy these hexes because the Chinese are not allowed to leave their country unless they get lent to the British, then they can start doing that. So we want to block the mountains. I moved into the jungle mountain there, and then I occupied Raccoon. I don't want to advance up here uh, because I don't want the British coming down and threatening Raccoon. I'm, I want to advance in this type of line. So and the Chinese, I just took everybody that's in the back and took the filled up the lines and doubled the lines. And we uh, moved our planes that were here out to here on an airbase. Actually, I'll just use this airbase. So I don't need to drop one this turn. And I am leaving the back open for Chinese partisans. And all I'm going to do is cover Peking and make sure the objectives are covered. And I will SR some extra troops in there, but these airplanes are here to support the attack on Linglei. And then I staged one 5-3 aircraft uh, to Singora from Saigon. And then I announced supply. Now, anything invading out of here, see, Saigon is a limited supply force for the ground forces, but any air navy coming out of here it doesn't supply that aspect of it. It has to come from Japan. So I now supply is moving from here to Haiphong. That's, that is my movement. Oh, the British. Now again, I'm going to put full, as a British player, I'm going to try to stop any attack I can. Any attack you can stop the Japanese from getting is just really going to help you out. So I think your maximum effort should be done now. Even though the Japanese will pretty much be stretched most of the time, they will never be stretched like they are like they are in this first turn. So we're going to take two fleets out of here and I'm going to run it up here and try to intercept that. So it's 11 hexes from Singapore to Haiphong. 
And now we roll to see if he gets it. Now he needs a one or a two. Let's see. Here we go. And it's a three, so that failed. FYI, remember I have planes stationed here. If he would have succeeded in that, I would have to fly out some planes and try to stop that. Because I can't have supply cut here, obviously. And the planes, that's why the planes are there. I just got to attack that. The reason you take the chance is because if it's a failed interception, the ships just didn't find them. They come back and they can still be used. Now the last thing is supply has to be run to the bridgeheads here. And I only have two people, and I'm not running any supply there. Even though it's basic and it's announced, I'm not going to protect it is my point. So we don't, he don't care about this one. And so that bridgehead will stay, but he's going to cut this bridgehead. He wants it off. And so the uh, Flying Tigers cut the beachhead and get rid of it. And that doesn't cost any BRPs, and the Flying Tigers are used. So that takes care of supply. And remember, supply is being run to these islands also from Japan, but it's up to if the Americans wish to stop the supply, then they have to ask the Japanese where it's coming from. Otherwise, it's assumed supply is being run to everything. So with the patrol coming out, you now do airstrikes. And so we will airstrike Pearl Harbor. And now we roll to see how we achieved surprise. He's not allowed to use that magic table. And in the basic game, I'm just going with the, uh, the table they start on. Using the 3436 table, we already established where the American carriers went, but we get a plus four to this surprise roll. So here we go. Oh my gosh, and it's a 10. That is crazy. When you read the surprise table, I mean, we get everything that's here. Uh, we're at 8 plus, so you get everything. But really, when you roll for the surprise, you really want better than a 7, which is air and naval units damaged by air attack or fleet combat are eliminated. So that's really what you're looking for, is 7 or better. But we got a 10. So we're going to strike this. The, the writing in italics is for fleets, the other one's for the airstrike, and we're looking for, uh, yes, the attacker receives a plus one to his attacker die rolls. Now due to the surprise and the ships not able to intercept and the air inverted, uh, they get no cap, they get no air defense rolls, so we are attacking. So we're going to start with the fleets. So. Because we have the surprise, we receive one, and because we're elite, we receive one. So we're adding two to this air attack die roll. Now remember, all eliminations and damages will count. Wow, I just got a 12. That's 13 ship factors. So, wow, nice hit. So, 13 are removed, and he still has 14 left. Now we'll move to the air. Now what you do with the land-based is you have to, since they're fighting uh, naval air, he gets to break down into naval air factors. And basically, uh, he gets a naval air factor for every land-based air factor he has there. He gets three. So he's going to have nine air factors there. So here we go. Same thing. We're adding two. And we just got seven, eight, nine. They lose eight air squadrons. And then they say if you only have one squad, remember, there's nine air squadrons here. You break this down. There's nine air squadrons because you're fighting over land against eight. And we destroyed eight of them. That means there's one air factor left here, naval air factor, or they call it an air squadron. And that is automatically eliminated. If you had two left, you would round it up to a full three air squadrons which would result back into one land aircraft. But as it is, there's only one air squadron left, and it four is eliminated, so we do eliminate the 3-3 three, three plane. Now, Japanese have another choice to make. This is what you have left on Battleship Row. The carriers can become involved. We do know a task force ended up in America. As an American, 
would you commit these carriers if you could? I say absolutely not. Why would you try to take on, what is it, 18, 21 air factors with six planes, risk losing your car carriers? So, if the Americans want to intercept, if the task force are on patrol, they, auto, they intercept automatically. Remember, that was already decided uh, before uh, the patrol mission came out from the Japanese. If they're on missions, they need to roll one, two, or three. Now, me personally, I would never try to intercept because for the six planes to try to take on the Japanese uh, six carriers, I mean, if both task force were on patrol and they intercept automatically, I may do it just because the Japanese don't have a navy there. As a Japanese player, player, I would still favor that. But since both American task force are on missions, you have to roll and therefore you can miss one and only one make it, which is basically a suicide. So in this case, definitely I would never consider it. But usually as an American player, I do not uh, try to intercept the Japanese second strike. Now you would say a bold Japanese player wouldn't put anything on cap and put everything here and go for the ships, especially if we're trying to pressure Pearl. However, I don't think you would call it bold because both those task force could appear and intercept. I would just call it kind of dumb if you don't protect yourself. I mean, there's no reason for the Japanese to lose a carrier right now. So I'm going to put four on cap. The rest, which is over 10, which will give me a modification, are going to attack the ships. Let's do it. So what we do is we roll for surprise. We don't have to search. We know where the base is, but you just got to get a surprise level. And the Americans are allowed to use a magic point. Now remember, the Japanese don't know what they have, and they're going to say... They're going to use a magic point. So here we go on the search, and we have to subtract one for the magic. And we have a two, it becomes a one. Okay, so we rolled the two minus the one for the magic. We ended up with one surprise level. So since there's a surprise, the Japanese can attack before any interceptions are, are rolled for, but that ain't the case here. So we get an air defense die roll. And for every nine fleet factors, well, they have a full nine and then another five, so it would be two. And then if the attack units are in a hex containing an objective, that's three containing a city or port you get two if for each city or port so there's two there that's four okay so the air defense is a four and modifiers sorry for the mistake again uh, I will get this down but you know I do forget things but the air defense of Pearl Harbors is quite considerably more than four you the fleets give you two for every nine and every fraction of nine uh, the objective at Pearl gives you another one that's three and then each port gives you two and there's two ports there so that's a total of four there so the defense there is seven so the Japanese would have lost more planes that's why it's it's no easy thing to bomb Pearl Harbor that's one of the reasons why I would just put my ships the task force back in the port at this point but you know as a Japanese player I'm still gonna strike this I mean my whole point of this game is keeping the pressure on Pearl Harbor for each air defense factor over 10 no if the attacker achieved a surprise of greater than 3 no okay so we're on the 4 table so here we go Here's the dice roll. Wow, 11. Man, I'm rolling good. So four. So two planes are shot down and two return home. So the Japanese just lost two elite aircraft and two return home. 
or return back to the carrier. So that actually leaves three, six, nine, ten. All right, because there's three, six, nine, twelve. Yeah. So there's ten aircraft attacking the rest of the ships. And here we go. The modification is only a plus one for elite aircraft. And we have an 8, which becomes a 9. And that, on the air attack table, is... Uh, 4 are sunk, 6 are damaged. So since you don't keep eliminating uh, damaged fleets, why there's still good fleets um, untouched. So the first thing you do is eliminate 4. So let me do that. Okay, so one is, I took a five off, so four died, one is remaining, and then there's six damaged out of this. So you just turn six over, and we're not going to worry about it right now, because that's it for the strike. The Japanese cannot make any more airstrikes than that. those two, and they will go home. So the Pearl Harbor strike went very, very well. We destroyed, what, 10, 17 ships. And that, you're never going to really get better than that. That's the best you're ever going to do. I mean, unless you roll two 12s in a roll. Otherwise, you're not going to do any better than that. And that left us with 10 ships on Pearl Harbor. Now, if you ever thought you can get it below 9... And somehow had some invasion force ready, you can invade Pearl Harbor next turn. You know, but look how even with it reduced below nine, you have to take out six infantry factors. You don't have the Marines to help you out reduce that. There ain't no way without if you left this area alone would you be able to invade Pearl Harbor only and you can't afford to leave this alone you have no money and then to to anticipate you destroying enough ships to get below nine uh, is really really ridiculous like like it won't happen and then you wasted uh, not conquering this area so like I said you will never do better than what I just did right now and that's how difficult it is to get the American ships below nine so it's pretty much impossible so to invade it I already went into all this in the other video it's just difficult to do and and the Japanese would have to put all their eggs in one basket here and if it fails, you basically played the game for, you know, six hours and took, you know, two turns and then decided you lost. So, it, it's just no way to look at it. I just wouldn't do it. So, that's why we're going to, short of invading Pearl, we're going after all the objectives and try to destroy the American carriers. Anyways, the second patrol now. The Americans, you know, not the Americans, the Allies could have intercepted that along its path or when it's got to its hex or in between each airstrike that it makes. Now, it is stated it is not doing any airstrikes. Now that the airstrikes are concluded, any Allied forces can automatically intercept that because basically they're saying this force had slowed down to do its airstrikes and now it's easy to locate. So now it can be intercepted automatically since it's not making any airstrikes and it is going to remain in that hex it is not returning for example like the task force here in Pearl it's done according to the rules it has to return to its port of origin which would be in Japan but the special rule for this one on the Pearl Harbor attack is it is allowed to go to truck and that's where we want it because now it stays on patrol duty and can help intercept any of these ships that are coming out to stop any of these two evasions. This task force now is not going to make any strikes. And so it is going to remain in the hex. It is not returning back to port. So now any interceptions that the Allies decide to do will be automatic. So I'm bringing three... British ships from Singapore automatically intercept 
and two Australian ships from Darwin. They automatically intercept. And so we have a battle here. And so you break down. Now since these are below nine ships, you can't have a task force, so you know what's coming at you at surface ships. We're hoping to get lucky and get a good search and the surface ships can engage. Otherwise, uh, they, they have to go for three rounds of searches before the ships, uh, the surface ships get engaged. So we'll just see how it goes. Remember, we're trying to stretch the Japanese. And they are going to break their task force into combat groups. And I think we're just going to leave it at one because we only have two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten ships. And you have to, a combat group has to consist of at least nine. So, we'll put the ships here. And we're going to assign nothing to cap. Everything goes on naval airstrike. And then we commence uh, carrier battle here. That battle, we follow the naval combat sequence of play. The success and failure of all interceptions is determined. We've done that. Interceptions automatic. Each player divides his naval force into one or more combat groups. And because the Japanese only have one task force, the Allies don't know what's in it. We already set it up, it has one combat group. And the surface ships just stay on the water. There's, you know, we already see what they have. Three, each player assigns his available carrier-based air, which I did. We're going after the naval units. Uh, each player computes his search modifiers, makes a die roll, and announces the result. So the search table. We're going to use this die roll modifiers for the Japanese they get plus one for the group they have no air sitting around there in the base and nothing in the enemy combat group that's another reason why you use patrols because when you get into the battle if the combat group is consisting of uh, units that are carrying out a mission the other side gets a plus so patrols you don't have to worry about that and then plus or minus for each magic point invoked. And we only had one and we used it at Pearl. So, we roll the dice and the Japanese will add one. The Allies will add none. One at a time, the red is the Japanese. So we have six, plus one is a seven, to a two. So the search results, you will look right here. We get a seven. Good visibility, the number of fast carriers and enemy combat groups. One is revealed, combat groups one, two, and three may attack. So everything's attacking. Uh, all enemy combat groups located. Uh, okay, so when you get anything higher than a seven or above, six will also apply. Okay, it ain't like you get everything below because the you only able to find so many groups but six will apply to anything that's seven or higher so all enemy combat groups are located so the surface ships are located now the uh, search levels of both sides and you compare them so the difference is a five so the surprise level for the Japanese is a five now remember okay so for a five we can basically put our surface ships in, which we, we don't want to. We're just going to send out our aircraft. So the Japanese receive a 5. Because of American radar, it goes down to a 4. And then they either have to select the fleet benefits, which are all in italics, or select the air benefits. And we're going to go with the air because the opponent search modifier was a 2 and he located no enemy units and plus he has surface ships so we are going to take six aircraft and we are striking the naval units now I'm going to show you one thing here this section of the book it's page 41 
this is your naval combat segments segments it tells you what to do how many phases you have and then it goes into detail the rest of this about each phase and what a naval combat sequence uh, consists of and it's all here it keeps going it keeps going it keeps going and it keeps going all this now when you get to the fleet combat it says here unless there's a surprise level of five even though we had a surprise level of five radar reduced it to four you don't have fleet combat you have to wait till the end of the third round of naval combat and then fleet combat takes place okay so you keep going here and it keeps going all this uh, it ends right here so all that is detailed on the carrier battle you just got to be careful of the sequences matter if you're doing a battle in the patrol sequence the naval combat sequence or during the combat phase so anyways we the Japanese are attacking we get an air defense die roll but you have to minus one because of the surprise oh here we go Wow a 12 becomes an 11 so one gets damaged one is sent home Wow what a roll now they only have one defense factor but shoot so basically two are out we're gonna eliminate one and we get to add one to our attack dice roll and I believe because we're elite so it is elite so add two to this dice and this is six seven eight and on the air attack at uh, five airplanes at eight we have two sunk and four damage so that's the entire force so it's done so with two different nationalities it has to be distributed equally so one loss to the Australians one loss to the British and then the Australians and British go home but you have damaged fleet factors and so they're inverted and they'll get repaired like that one's inverted and that one's inverted they'll get repaired free of uh, BRP so let's go on with our rest of our uh, combat phase now so let's start the offensive option is we start moving our uh, ships and we're gonna take we're gonna see transport this six from Saigon to Singora and uh, we're gonna take these nine fleets carrying three factors and we're just gonna sell right here to Haiphong from Haiphong the entire group and I'm gonna keep it separate because the guy intercepting is gonna to have to know but this is traveling as one group from Haiphong it is now traveling to Kamran Bay which is here so now I have this whole group so it goes like this we're going just like this down the row these guys go to Kamran Bay they're allowed to link up with any other invasion force we're gonna take the marine in here and we're gonna to sail to the Kamran Bay now we have this huge force that is now gonna go do the invasion routes and this whole thing from Kamran Bay goes to Brunei right here where I unload this so the whole force is here and this gets detached then I proceed over to Palembang the whole force is selling and at Palembang we dispatch the marine and a 1-2 infantry right there and then that whole force continues to Surabaya and Surabaya comes over with with six factors and hits Surabaya and then these 12 factors and a 3-2 and 1-2 head to Bala Popkin so as they come around here the island Borno one just splits that way and one splits that way and that's the invasions we have in this area then we announce and remember we have the sea transport then we announce from Japan we are taking 18 fleets and we're hitting there with the tanks then we are taking three right here 
from truck and we are going to hit Tarawa then we're going to take three from the Marianas and we're invading Ley. That is my invasions. Now the allies at this point if you're the other player you try to stop whatever you can. You don't want any of this succeeding but you're going to try to take your best chances at whatever you can stop here. We're now going to roll for interceptions and let's start with the carrier from Colombo. It's got to go 12 hexes. Uh, actually See, here's the question, does that touch that hex or not? But I think it can just round the tip here. If we give them that, it's 11. This one's automatic, this one's automatic. The British is automatic to there. The British here goes one, two, three, four, and four, anything but a six. Got it? This one goes one, two, three, and three's automatic. And then the Australians go uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And eight is a one through a three. And he got it. So everything succeeded of our interceptions except the carrier. Okay, so now we'll see me as the Japanese what I want to counter intercept. You know, I'm half tempted just for our game to say the carrier makes it here and see how this combat would go. But just to see if the Japanese setup here covers everything. So I think we're just going to do that. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's say it succeeds. And now out of this task force, we're going to split off one ship and we're going to evade this one or intercept this one it's automatic it's right there and I think one and since the Dutch have a poor uh, die roll modifier that should do that and then this one we're just going to take our chances with and the rest of this task force is going to intercept the ships here at Paula Bank now even you can split out ships out of the task force like that and go do stuff but remember we want to keep it at nine for our combat. We're at uh, two, four, six, seven, yeah, I have nine, so I don't want to split off another one. We're going to let this one go. Uh, like I said, if I miss anyone, it's going to be this one. As the British, see the British taken off from here are going to get hit by this air factor. Why? That's why it's there. We can't afford to lose these invasions. So as soon as they enter the water portion of this hex, the air attacks. Okay, so we have both of these coming out this way, and then I forgot the place, there's an extra naval air factor for the Japanese. Well, it, it goes right here in Saigon. Now there's a rule, if separate naval activities are intercepted in the port of origin, which is right here, and we fly the air here, then the entire force gets intercepted together. So this three is attacking these two. And then, now it's his counter interception to my intercept to my counter interceptions. Now you would think you would send this fleet to here to help this strike, but we're thinking that it may not pay off. I mean, there's only two fleet. He's going to have five fleet. He don't know what the Japanese has, and he has two air power. I mean, it would be a good battle. This one, if he sent him here, he would definitely put a stop, most likely, to this invasion of Java, thus forcing the Japanese back there. Let's try to hurt this one now. So the British are going to send the three to intercept here. It's one two, three, four, five, six. Uh, actually, it came out of the patrol from here. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five. So that would be 
anything but a six and he gets it and he got it so that goes there so we have no option now but to use our two three here and we need to attack that two three now with air power so that's it everything's committed I still have the naval air in case this fails and a one factor fleet so we'll start with the uh, air attacks here so this three is attacking these two and he gets a two at two air uh, he still only has one air defense factor and he misses and then so now I attack those two ships and I have a nine I have three air factors at a nine and we sink one and the other ones aborted so we stopped that we stopped those two going up there he flies back with no loss now we're going to take care of this one right here because this was done at a different time remember he's counter intercepting and we're going to go ahead and he has three factors here and he's going to roll the air defense here and he rolled a seven and he does abort one plane so one Japanese plane goes home so only one is attacking and a seven and we sink one so two British ships make it out of here we're gonna go ahead and use our one Japanese fleet and counter intercept this as it leaves We have one, two, three, four, five. It's going to be anything but a six. And we got that one. So let's fight these two out. We have the British with two factors. And we have a six. Fleet nationality is the same as the Japanese. And... He has two factors, so one Japanese ship is sunk, and now the Japanese factor will roll, and we have a 10. And on that one, we sink a British and send one home. So that worked out good for us. Japanese lose one, and the British lose another one. And one gets sent back. So we stopped that counter interception. I still have one naval air factor left. So we have some naval battles to take care of. Let's take care of this one first. One on one. Let's see how it goes. We use the fleet combat. Uh, fleet nationality. That's what we're looking for. Uh... Japan's a two and the Dutch are a five. The difference between that is a three. So we're going to add three to this die roll for the Japanese. Six becomes a nine. So fleet combat at one. We do sink that ship. The counter roll. Six seven minus three becomes a four, and one gets damaged. So one will go back to port. So this is damaged and it returns to its port of origin. I uh, don't have the task force in the right spot. Sorry about that. Because 20 hexes from Gagoshima is right there. So from there you reach those. So anyways, from there he returns to his port of origin. He's damaged. And the Dutch is sunk. This one's going to go ahead and fight. This one, 
I'm not intercepting a ball of popkin, and we'll see what happens. So the Australians and the Japanese are even at two, and they have two fleets. Let's see what they get. And we roll a three. And wow, really lucked out on that one. See, that's a nothing. And so the Japanese roll. We rolled a nine, and you have to minus one becomes a eight, and we sink both Australian ships. So that worked out. We have our most exciting battle left, which is right here. And we break down into combat groups. This is getting intercepted by this, by this. It's not involved yet, because these two intercepted this, but the task force intercepts these two, so you resolve it in reverse order. So this fight goes first. The question is how to allocate the air. And as an English player, I'm saying, well, you know what? This CVL don't have much chance. And basically, I was hoping to intercept this and force the Japanese to commit this patrol to some invasion, which would allow, you know, wherever this patrol goes to commit itself, it's going to probably stop the invasion. But other ones... This one I never really thought I could beat a patrol if the patrol came at it. But it helped other areas, you know, succeed with their interceptions. So anyways, we're going to take these forces. Even though this doesn't have a task force marker, and you know what it is, you still follow the naval combat sequence. So it goes into a combat group like this. And the Japanese are in theirs. Now he knows what he has. He just has to find it. Because now we move into a tactical type of situation. Uh, fighting a carrier battle. So we have a search role for the allies of a five. And it says moderate search results. One enemy combat group remains hidden. Therefore the defender gets to pick what is hidden. And he picks this as being hidden. And then the Japanese rolled a 2, which is plus, he gets a plus 1 because he has one combat group, which becomes a 3. Two enemy combat groups remain hidden, therefore this combat group is hidden. No battle took place, you must go into another round, and they're going to search again. Here's the allies, a 2. And again... He finds nobody, the Japanese, six becomes a seven, and he finds the combat groups, and he may attack with his. So the battle commences. Okay, now before the, you know, we roll again for another round, you can assign your air units, and I was going to assign one to Cap, so I did it, even though I don't have to now because they didn't find me, but... I put one on cap, so two are striking, and his remained on naval airstrike, but he didn't find anybody. So, the two Japanese are coming in, and we're going after this combat group, and of course we're going after the carrier. Let's see what su surprises we had. It's, it's a difference of, remember he gets a plus one, he was a seven. So the difference is a five. Enemy cap out of position, air combat between attackways and cap only after the airstrike is resolved. That don't matter. But we do get a plus one to my, my attack die rolls. And he has to minus one off his, his air defense. So very good search modifiers for the Japanese. Following the uh, naval combat sequence, the cap takes place. There is no cap for two reasons. One... The British didn't put cap on, but remember the surprise level, he wouldn't get to fight his cap. Anyways, we rolled to the, each combat group gets an air defense. Based on what it has in that group is the defense factors. Now he only gets a one, because all he has is this one ship. He has an air defense of one. Let's roll it. And remember, he has to minus one off this roll. Wow, what a roll. 12 becomes an 11. One sunk, one aborts. So two are out of there. And we're going to lose one. So, so one goes back. 
and now two go after the carrier and the carrier gets a defense roll now. So now the carrier will get his defense roll and he all carriers will have a defense of one and he has to minus one off his dice also. So an eight becomes a seven and we aboard another plane. So only one Japanese plane got through and let's attack. Remember we add one to this attack and a six becomes a seven and we have one damaged carrier. So that two goes to a one. So since this uh, carrier was damaged, since this carrier was damaged, it now returns home. And is inverted. this round of combat with the carrier going home the aircraft can land on any other carrier while well, they don't have one or the rule states that any planes that were sent out on an airstrike must come back and land on the carrier if the carrier has been damaged or destroyed then the planes are destroyed if the planes flew cap then the planes that flew cap are allowed to land on the nearest friendly air base but since these were set out on a strike they are destroyed we decide do you want to go another round or retreat now since Pollenbeng is going to get invaded he may lose his ship he's going to keep on with it so a third round of combat will now take place and since I know he has no more carriers I'm putting everything on the strike so here comes the Japanese search add one to it is seven again he finds the ship and the ship don't matter he won't be able to well it will if he rolls high well he rolled a six let's see no matter it doesn't matter for him he won't get into combat and the surprise level will be one and that won't help anything else here so let's make the air defense die roll of one and it is a 10. Man, the Allies are rolling great for their air defense die rolls. It's crazy. And he sinks another aircraft. And so now we attack with three. Are all striking that ship. And we rolled a 10. And that will sink the Dutch. And so that task force is done, and it will remain on patrol. In task force five, goes back to its original hex. So. With that being done, it looks like every invasion has succeeded to some extent he didn't turn any of them back so that was maximum effort by the allies I was just showing you and the Japanese were pushed to the limit let's get on with the invasions so this returns back to here we unload a 3-2 in that port this will go ahead and strike that. This returns back to Camran Bay. This will go ahead and unload this. This returns back to Hoiku. And this, and then this one is done. And no shore bombardment for here. And these ships will return. And we fly the counter air for that. And these two come out for ground support on that hex. Let's counter air that inverted American aircraft. So it's a uh, plus two to the Japanese. We need the red dice for this. There it is. The Japanese will be red and they get a six so two factors are eliminated from the Americans one from the Japanese the high gear 
This one can automatically walk across the jungle undefended. So this does not get the double because they have the minus one for their allied unpreparedness. So it's two to one odds. And a four. That two to one is a counterattack one to one. Four. Counterattack one to one is an exchange. We lose a Dutch. We lose one Japanese and we take Java. So let's conduct this one. And you have a one. You're doubled to the two. You get another one for the beach. When we're attacking Paula Bang, the patrolling task force can help support this. It's allowed to use its air factors. Now, there was a mistake I made here. The shore bombardment ships were supposed to be with this force because you need them to finish off this invasion. So they weren't over with the uh, the Bullock Popkin ones. They should be with the Palembang ones. So anyways, there's shore bombardment there. The aircraft, which have already conducted battles, are allowed to also provide ground support. So you have a defense of one, plus your defense modifier two, the beach three, and the marsh four. The marines will take away one of those for invading the beach and then allied unpreparedness takes away your defense multiplier so you get a two defense multiplier so your actually defense of this beach is a two you're doubled and we attack it with two we attack it with three and we attack it with four because remember every three shore bombard counts it's one and every three aircraft counts as one so it's actually a two to one on pollen bank and we have a two. And a two is a counterattack one to two. And attack uh, defender is eliminated. So another Dutch dies. We storm on that beach unopposed. This one over here should be a two to one, right? He's only doubled because of the allied unpreparedness. So he's a two. I'm hitting it with three and one tank for two to one. We have an exchange. Jeez, we're getting killed here. We lose two aircraft. We go ashore with that. And these are all exploiting tanks. And then that's it for the two to ones. Oh, we do have an air a paratrooper drop. So let's do the two to ones. I have a four, and you are doubled to a two. Oh, this one's two to one too. Okay. Because you don't get the extra one for being on defense. Two to one. And we get a clean kill. This one hits and advances. Hitting this over land. So you would be a three. However, allied unpreparedness will just give you a two. So it's one to one. Here comes my first one to one. And I got a four. It's an exchange. And then we have another right here. Your two, your double to a four, plus the jungle is a five. But you lose the defense multiplier. So you're only a one 
you're only a two. You would be a four, and I've got a four. One to one. Wow. We lost that one. And then going against Manila. One to one with the tanks. Clean kill. And then overwhelming this one, five to one. It's a defender eliminated. think that is all the attacks we're gonna attrition up there we have this one goes back to truck and we walk inland it's undefended port and we'll take that hex just to get going on Port Moresby this one succeeds on Tarawa and it goes back to Saipan let's do the attrition here. And I try to stay above the 21 table here against the Nationalists and 11 against the Communists. So, here we go. The 21 table is a 2. And 3 counters off the Chinese. And then the Communists. 1 on the Communists. Nice. 2 counters. That's the best we can hope for for that. So the attrition for them is done. Now the combat phase is over. The patrol goes back to its hex, which is right there in Japan. And that is all we got there. Now at the end of the combat phase, any of the island groups which we have a supplied uh, a Japanese unit, then the rest of the island groups that are not in your control but don't have any enemy units on it go to your control. So now the Mariana Islands belong to the Japanese. I'll just put a Japanese marker there so that we know that. And then I had to put markers out here that the Japanese own these island groups. So let's go to unit construction. We have five BRPs. But just to finish the wrap up of the offensive that took place, I'm pretty happy with it. I'd say 90% successful. A little bummed out that we're not going to get Singapore now in the winter 42 because I lost this one to one the one to ones weren't bad I should have had four so we really lucked out on this one which is nice but this one I have a I cover for that that's why two units drop here I don't really take both of them down there I could just run one this way but I didn't have to do that uh, <clears throat> but all in all everything was successful Everything was successful, and and all these were successful, so I'm pretty happy with it. A little disappointed on the amount of losses I had, especially with the Elite Aircraft, but, you know, all in all, I think we've done more damage to the Allies, obviously, but... I mean, the Allies lost a total of, what, 12, 13, 17, counting the Dutch, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 20, 23 fleet factors, and we lost one. So that's a huge advantage. And then the Allies lost one uh, and five. They lost six Army air factors. And we lost three. See, I don't like that. And then they lost two naval 
air factors and we lost five and then ground troops we've lost a total of five six seven factors they lost one two three four five six seven they lost seven to our seven so you know it is what it is Oh, counting the Chinese and Communists, that's right. So they lost 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. They lost 14 ground factors to our 7. So, all in all, pretty good. So, let's do the builds. They have 5 BRPs. We're going to build infantry. We need the infantry back. Then SR is basically, I took a 3-2 off of here. And we have to get it down to here. And then the Thailand force I bought. So everything's back down here with the air support. we got to get ready for Singapore. The other three, two went in this port. I put the ships here because this has to get ready to go to Wake. And then I put ships here on Palembang because this has to get ready to go to Rabal. So that's how I do it. The Marine and the 1-2 I use there. This force I really never move because when the Americans start their counterattack, it's going to come up through this way and I like to defend Paula Popkin like that. I have time to get these on but these are already here I just leave them. I can't move that ship out it's adjacent to the Chinese. I'll have to be done in movement. And these airplanes I can't SR next to that so they're pretty much stuck there yeah I'll probably get I want to get some air units in burn remember we're going to be putting pressure on this over here so that's it let's get to the Chinese turn the Chinese front I'm not interested in moving anything yet and I'm on the 21 table let's see what we get Six. Well, 21 table is one counter. So one Japanese counter dies somewhere. We don't want to take that off. It's a partisan. Mm. Yeah, I guess I'll do this one. And then the communists are on the one, the 10 table. They get a three, and that one will miss. So it's builds for those guys. Communists get to rebuild one free every turn. And the Chinese have five BRPs left. So they'll be able to build their three. Chinese turn is done. And remember until their Lent they can't move out of China. So we're good. That concludes the 1941 Japanese opening turn. We will come back with the start of the spring. Now remember, the uh, future planning for spring is Rob Bull and Wake, and then I'm gonna and I'm gonna send my task force back out to Pearl. If I was in the middle of a game, I tell the guy.